Up next, the next big meetup of the CBS New York Book Club with Mary Calvi. It's about to begin. Author Howard Rogers is ready to talk about the local ties in his book, Tropicalia, as well as answer questions from Club Calvi members. Mary, take it away. Right now, CBS New York's Book Club with Mary Calvi. For Harold Rogers, his day job is a boxing coach at a Manhattan gym. But his dream was to become a published author. I knew in my heart this was a book. The dream came true with his debut novel, Tropicalia. The CBS New York Book Club Reader's Choice is a story of family secrets and culture clashes that come to a head on Brazil's Copacabana Beach. Our latest Reader's Choice Tropicalia packs a punch. That's the author Harold Rogers, a book lover and a boxer. When do you get a combination like that? Hello and welcome to the CBS New York Book Club. I'm Mary Calvi. Our book club focuses on fiction with plots or authors based in the tri-state area. And you select what we read by voting from our top three fic picks. Members of our book club said the tension in Tropicalia made it a page turner. It's just constant suspense as to you kept thinking to yourself, it's like, are you kidding me? Are you really going to do that? I just, I couldn't put the book down. I, it was, you know, I'm literally falling asleep with the book in my lap. Grief and the love, and it was really moving. You can't choose your family. There's, um, there's also at least one part from every perspective of every character where you realize that they do love each other. And that's, that's what I thought was beautiful about the book. Our club members took a deep dive into Tropicalia. Producer Danielle Parker will share some of their questions during the show. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Mary. While Tropicalia is about a character named Daniel, our readers were also drawn to the women in the book who seemed to influence a lot of the action. They had our members talking, and I'm looking forward to sharing what they had to say. Mary. Thanks, Danielle. And what a story it is in the days leading up to a New Year's Eve party on the bustling sands of Brazil's Copacabana Beach. A family reckons with the matriarchs along the way to return, causing old secrets to come to light in this debut that explores the heartbreak and hope of what it means to be from two homes, two people, and two worlds. And wouldn't you know, the author, too, is from two worlds, the literary world and the boxing world. I started writing really in secret for a long time when I was 17. I didn't share it with people for a long time because I was kind of embarrassed about it. You don't usually find a novelist at a boxing gym. But Harold Rogers is no ordinary creative writer. The knife was in my hand. The countdown was starting. Mateos grabbed my shoulder. Dude, where are you going? I shook him off. Ten. Hey, stop pushing, kid. Nine, revenge, revenge, the knife in my hand. A couple years out of Columbia University, Rogers got a book deal and published his first novel. I had the pleasure of meeting the boxing coach inside the ring at Church Street Gym. So nice to see you here, the place you call home. Yeah. Rogers authored Tropicalia that explores the heartbreak and hope of what it means to be from two homes and two worlds. The book so exceptional it became the reader's choice of the CBS New York Book Club where 4,000 voted. An infectiously vibrant debut that he felt wasn't ready for the spotlight until after many, many drafts. The tension wasn't there in the story, right? And it wasn't, there wasn't this propulsion. There was no beat to the story. And it, and it, after a certain point, it really was sagging. And so I was like, I got to get this tight, and I want the story to go all the way to the last page. I want it to be, you know, really going the whole time. And that I thought was incredible for you to like get me to the next chapter. It was like the cliffhanger every time. Yeah. You're like, oh no, he's got the knife in his pocket. <laughs> what is he going to do? Rogers tells me he used his own experience to create the setting. That was like the starting point, Rio and Copacabana specifically. My mom is Brazilian. She would take us out of school, me and my sister, and homeschool us in Brazil for several months out of the year and then bring us back. And it was like really this back and forth that was, you know, being one place to another. 
so too does the book. One place to another, one person to another. It moves and it moves fast. But one thing in Roger's life has always been constant, his love of boxing. I started boxing when I was 10 or 11, right in Rio, right across the street from the apartment I was living in, which is the apartment in the book. So can I teach you something? Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the one, two. So your hands are up. You're gonna extend this left hand out just like that. Activating the shoulder, reach it out just like that. One, throw it, yeah, just like that. And then you're gonna follow it with this right hand, turning the shoulder and the hips. One, two, one, two, one, two. An art that may just have helped in the path to becoming a published author. Rogers tells me writing is a lot like preparing for a match. Like being back in the training cycle, right? Where it's like every day, it's a daily grind. It beats you down. Sometimes you can't figure out. Some days are better than others. You know, you have your successes throughout writing. And then some days it's just like, this, I got beat up. And three years from the first word on paper, Tropicalia was born. Just keep pushing. It's like boxing, too. Like, you might not see all the progress right away, but it happens. People come to the gym, <laughs> they get better, and they get to where they want to be. It's the same thing with writing a book. You show up every day, and things happen. <laughs> And welcome to Harold Rogers. What a way to start your literary career. The Reader's Choice. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That, that was cool. That was. <laughs> it was. Thank you for inviting us in. I oh, need to yeah, like, be great. a little bit stronger on the left hook. Well, there. you just got to keep working, right? <laughs> keep working. Like you, said, <laughs> you said it. It was really incredible to hear you because you said it was really like training. And isn't it true? You just have to keep going, keep going, keep going. And you did it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of you know, stumbles along the way, you know, little triumphs on the way, but you just got to keep going. And a big triumph at the end. Yeah, Amazing. it worked out. We have gotten so much feedback about your fierce writing, and I really loved hearing about that because that's how I felt, too. A lot of people are like, wait a minute, this is his debut. How could that even be? <laughs> so uh, tell me a little bit about what you were saying that you were starting in secret. You didn't really want people to know at first. Yeah. A writer. I don't know. Maybe it was the idea that it was, you know, being writing is, and I feel like writing fiction is so vulnerable. It's and I so think true. I was uncomfortable with that vulnerability for a long time, <laughs> yeah. especially since the stuff was no good that I was <laughs> writing. I don't know about that. Yeah. But incredibly, you kept writing. I mean, you were saying to me that you wrote like a short story a day for a long time. Yeah, the, the summer after I graduated high school, that's, that's, you know, my first spark. I was doing a short story a day and, you know, just trying to do new stuff, trying different things. And then eventually I wrote a few novels that I, you know, threw in the trash and they're away. But finally, you know, it made it. this worked oh, out. Really amazing. Your main character, Daniel, not a boxer, no. but certainly fighting his way through yeah, life this whole for time. Sure. Give me a little bit about him. Where did he come from and why did you decide that you wanted him to be your main character? Um, I think Daniel came from, you know, I started with maybe myself and, and some of my worst instincts or my foibles. Mm -hmm. And I was just, you know, it's, it's hard being a young man in a lot of ways and there's a lot of pitfalls. And I wanted to explore a character who does not have it figured out and does not have like a strong, like Daniel's missing a father, he's missing a mother. He doesn't have a strong paternal influence, any good influence really. And I want to explore how do you find yourself without guidance mm -hmm. like that? Can you? Is it possible? And then, you know, he came to be. So we have so many questions for you from the CBS New York Book Club. The members have been asking. And so let's head over to the book club producer, Daniel Parker who's reading them all for us, I did. All right. Hi, Mary and Harold. I love what Harold was saying about vulnerability, about fighting your way through draft after draft after draft. I mean, that's bravery, especially when you think, wow, this is awful. Yeah. But you keep doing it over and over again. That's fabulous. But we have a couple of questions from our readers about the book setting in Brazil. Lori said that she read Tropicalia with a translation tool because she couldn't understand all the Portuguese and she needed to understand everything. Alexandria wants to know how Harold feels, why Harold feels it's important for someone from the tri-state area to read his book. And Gabriella wants to know more about the meaning of the title Tropicalia, and she also had this. My question 
to Harold is, could this book have taken place anywhere else? My family is Brazilian. And so to me, something that resonated a lot and I thought was really interesting seeing him speak on was some of the issues Brazil faces as a country. So let's talk a little bit about that. What were your thoughts? That That's, you know, Gabriella brings up uh, the fact that this book could not have taken place anywhere else, mm -hmm. even though I'll, I'll try to bring all the, the questions into my answer. But in the title, Tropicalia, right, is about really the myths of Brazil. It's it's taken from a musical movement in the mid 20th century that, that sprung up in response to the dictatorship. And it was about finding a Brazilian identity without rejecting influences from outside of Brazil. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this book with a lot of American literary influence, but trying to figure out I think in a lot of ways how I feel about my own Brazilian identity, being a Brazilian American. And I didn't want to issue the American side of myself, right? Mm -hmm. And so this book is about a lot of the myths of Brazil. And Tropical, like formally it plays with a lot of, you know, the ideas of Brazil, like the idea of Brazil had kind of had this place in the imagination of a lot of Americans, especially throughout the 20th century and on, that it was a place of total racial harmony, and harmony in every sense. It's this paradise where everyone is, you know, can, there, there's no racism, there's no problems of that sort. And so the book takes that kind of as an initial thing and tries to explore it within there. You know, it, it really comes across when you say Copacabana Beach, mm. you think of a postcard. Yeah. You sort of just strip that away and say this is what's really happening. And it was raw and it was real and it was really emotional. I wanted to ask you about using the Portuguese. I mean, you felt that that was a really important piece of it too. Yes, definitely, because that's, you know, the mixture. I wanted to get mm -hmm. that mixture, mm -hmm. the, the Brazilian-American mixture throughout. And though I felt like when I started writing this, there was a lot more Portuguese and a lot of unnecessary Portuguese. Like I was looking just casually back at some old drafts of this and like little Marta, the kid yeah. used to, all her dialogue was in Portuguese. Uh, in dialogue. Yeah, because yeah, it was something? always like, it was like almost like I was protecting her from the Americanness Look or something that. like yeah, that. What a great idea. But then you decided. But then I decided I, I wanted to make it readable even if you didn't know any Portuguese at all I wanted you to be able to understand the book and I like going in and and you know defining everything and translating everything that 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 makes me happy that someone would have that impulse to yeah, do they're that they're just so engaged yeah. and really want to be involved in your writing process we have a lot more questions so let's yeah, get okay. back over to Daniel Parker to see what other questions the members have for us there were a lot Mary and Harold well our club member Joe said he found the book relatable because he could draw parallels to his own life so he wanted to know how much of Tropicalia is based on Harold's life and we we have a question from one of the authors of our beach bag books which were our picks for summer reads but we think you should consider reading them no matter what the weather hi harold my name is clavis natera and i am the author of the novel neruda on the park my question for you is what was a surprisingly joyful part of writing this book oh well, that's such a good great question what did you, what do you think um the joyful part i think was living in Brazil the whole time. And I think really, I didn't know how the book was gonna end. And seeing Lucia and Daniel and little Marta come to this, I think they came to a sort of peace and togetherness and a harmony was, was really joyful for me, you know, because I, I obviously felt so close to the characters and they, exactly. they felt real to me in the writing of yeah, it. Yeah, don't they become part of the family? Yes, I know for, for me, sure. I was so close. I was like crying yeah. when I was writing some of them. Now, what about, how close is it to your life? I know you, you lived there and even the apartment in yeah. the book is based on where you live. So yeah. give us a little bit about like how much of it is from your own own life there's a lot of it that I take from my life and I would say every character is fictional but it starts with portraits of, of people in my family certainly people I knew and a lot of the events that happen in the book there's there's pieces everywhere of stuff oh this really happened to me and I'm mixing it in and I'm making it fiction um, you know like like 
uh, some of the sadder stuff in the book, like the grandpa's death scene, you know, that, that was pretty real to life. And, you know, some of the harder stuff was, was real too, but some of the, the joys and stuff where, you know, it's just mixing life and fiction. That, that's how I like to create. You know what I wanted to ask you, I know for me when I was writing, I'd love to be at the actual place that I was writing about, just because you could feel it, you could smell it, you can just kind of get a sense of exactly what it was like to walk on that path. Yeah. How much did you write in New York or did you write some in Brazil? as well um, I wrote some in in New York and in Brazil and in Ohio mm -hmm. too but I think the bulk of the book came together during the pandemic when I wasn't in Brazil and I couldn't be in Brazil and I you know my family was there and I just felt so exiled from it in a way and so you know, I was just really living in all my memories of Brazil, my memories of walking down in Copacabana. But after the pandemic was over, I went and I checked in and I, and I wrote a whole draft of it while I was in Copacabana. But maybe that desire to be there. Yeah, certainly. And that, that, was, that, that was part of the joy too, right? I'm away from it, but I get to be so in the mix. I love that. Mm -hmm. During our book club meetup on Zoom, our members had a lot to say about the character Maria. Readers were conflicted about her. Here's some of the conversation. I really wanted to not like Maria. I mean, what she did was pretty horrific leaving her children. But I still had so much compassion for her. Did anybody else feel that way? It's really hard not to like any of the characters because as you read from chapter to chapter, you kind of realize that there's so much left unsaid. It definitely mirrors real life. There's always another side to the story that you're you're not always privy to at the exact time you're, you're feeling a certain way about a character and it's just, it, it's, it's complex. Right now, CBS New York's Book Club with Mary Calvi. How to throw a punch. Harold, it was so good meeting you in the ring. I've never been in the ring and I wasn't very good. <laughs> so I'll, I'll have to keep working on that. But please tell me um, about your book, Tropicalia. It was a reader's choice. And I was so curious about your writing process. So was it like every day? I mean, I know you had mentioned it was a grind. Or did you just, you know, write in, in bulk and then take some time off? I'd love to hear just more about that. Um. I think I'd like to, to check in with it every day, just to, you know, even if I do one sentence, just checking in with it, thinking about it, I was always thinking about it, and when I can, take out a big chunk, you know, if I can take out a five hour chunk and just, you know, clack away, sure. then I'll do it, right? And, but just checking in with it every day was positive for me. When I'm reading, I feel like I'm writing, I'm making little notes to myself for my own book if, when I'm reading other things. I, it was really enjoyable. And 
it was kind of like as hot as the weather on the Copacabana yeah, Beach, good. too. So it all involved that. And it was just very fierce in the writing. What was your reaction when you found out you were going to be a published author when you had that book deal in hand? Oh, my God. It was a, it was <laughs> a thrill. It was a relief. Sure. I, I, was, I was beyond happy. Oh, all right. How about we check back in with our book club members? Let's do it. They have a lot of questions, Harold, for you. So get ready for it, Danielle. Yeah, Mary and Harold, some of our readers, many of our readers, were captivated by the way Harold told the story. Joe, Joe said he was amazed that this was Harold's first book. He wanted to know more about the method of Harold's storytelling, the multiple points of view. And Carla had a question about one of her favorite chapters in the book. It's told from the perspective of the grandmother, Marta. I felt nervous reading it. I felt anxious. I felt love, I felt grief and all the things, but I'm interested on his perspective as well for why that was the one chapter he decided to write without punctuation and stream of consciousness. How about that question? The punctuation question keeps coming yeah. up for you. <laughs> well, um, that grandma chapter is one of my favorite chapters and it just Really, I was copying another writer in the form of that chapter, Antonio Lobo Antunes, who's this Portuguese writer, and he, he writes f like broken up like that. Mm -hmm. But it just felt right. And I really, I was doing an imitation exercise of him, and that chapter came out, and I just kept working within that form, and I think it was really appropriate, you Is know. Is it more of spoken word uh, or tell it? Tell yeah, it's like a, it's this. Stream of yeah, it's like this telling, you know. I feel like this, the grandma is like this oracular figure in a certain way, and it just felt like that chapter gave her the heft that she deserved. And, and the multiple points of view, oh, why did you take uh, that approach? Um, I think that's something I like as a reader, just the varying perspectives. And it allows me to just explore different things with language. Each character has their own language, their own syntax. I can, and, you know, it's inherently suspenseful going from one character to the other, Isn't right, and changing like that. Yeah, so. exactly. Just gets you going, yeah. like you had said. We have another question from our book club, and uh, Danielle, I wanted to make sure you ask this. Well, we talked about the multiple points of view, and we're going to try to do this without any spoilers, no spoilers. But we have a question about the book's last few pages, and this is what Lori has to say about that chapter. It's amazing. It just, it's, it's the best flip-flop I ever read in my life, how he chose the order of the voices, especially the last voice. That's a really great question. So how was, did you know how you were going to approach that from the very beginning, or did it come to you as, as you continued? The, the last... Like, I always knew the book would start with Daniel and end with Lucia. And, you know, I didn't know the order of the voices throughout, but I knew Daniel and Lucia would get most of, chap of the chapters. But really, I felt like Lucia was kind of the family chronicler in a lot of ways. And so the end of the story was her, you know, it was, it was her journey, right? And she's, she gets the final say. And, it's, and it shows some development, too. It's, it's years later. It's the most different chapter, and I feel like it shows a more mature, mm -hmm. it's probably maybe the most mature and thoughtful of all the chapters, that, that last one. It really comes, I feel like it, it's a culmination of the book and, and everything that leads up to it. And it does show how she overcomes so much and sort yeah. of opens up her mind to uh, the relationship with her mother. Yes. And allows her to carry on. Yeah. Um, and uh, I did miss Daniel. Yeah. As I got to the last yeah. page. <laughs> where, where is he? I hope he's yeah. doing okay. But that was purposeful on your part, right? Yeah. Like readers kind of sit with Yeah, him. I don't, you know, I think, I hope he's all right, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? But, but yeah, I, I, I that just felt like the most natural resolution. Yeah, I think you're right about that. We have so much more to ask you. Okay. And we have to talk about our next Fix Picks as well. We'll be right back.
Right now, CBS New York's Book Club with Mary Calvi. Welcome back. We're counting down to your vote on which book our club should read next. On Wednesday on CBS 2 News This Morning, we will announce our next top three fig picks. After the announcement, you can vote on our website, cbsnewyork.com. You can just scan the QR code on your screen. We will announce our next reader's choice next week. Harold Rogers, please tell us you're writing more because we really, really enjoyed your first book. I'm, I'm definitely writing more. I, I'm working on something right now. Um, I don't like to talk too much about it, but it's, um, I would say it's, it's the American side of this story in a way, mm -hmm. you know, but it's still exploring Brazilian American identity and things like that. It's going to be multiple perspectives, but I'm working, I'm cooking. Oh, this is so exciting. I mean, is boxing your career is writing your career or is maybe a great combination of both ah uh, you know I'm, I'm just I'm just doing what I'm doing I love know? it I love <laughs> it please tell us some advice maybe for a young writer who might be watching and would love to be able to say I'm a published author um, I, I think the most important thing really is, is reading as much as you can you know especially if if you're just starting out, read as much as possible. Try your own things. Try a lot of different things. Just just read and write as much as possible. And, and on the subject of reading, I mean, what do you enjoy reading? I mean, what would be on your nightstand? Oh, everything. You know, really? every old, old, old stuff. You know, I read contemporary stuff. I like to mix it up. Poetry, English, Portuguese, you know. Uh, I think you had mentioned that early on, very, when yeah. you were really young, you were reading just like biographies about Yeah, athletes. when I was a kid. That's what I would, you know, just just athlete biographies as a kid. That was... But that. It, it, that's so typical, but also, you know, the perfect story because you have the beginning and you have the Yeah, end. it is. So it's, really a it's a great way to start. learn a life. Yeah, so right? for parents who might want their sons to read, maybe the sports biography. Is that's a good one, too, you know. Right? And, and then it was in high school that you decided let me go into the classics or? yeah that's one because I, I was going into college and I didn't feel like I knew anything and so I, I just looked like hundred best novels and just picked <laughs> a couple I did crime and punishment and Lolita and, oh. and that, that sparked me oh those are two fantastic yeah. ones classics yeah. you know and uh, your experience at Columbia um, in in literature yeah I'm sure that must have been quite intense but also uh, quite inspirational yes there, there were some really influential classes and professors I had I took this this class on William Faulkner's books and his influence around the world and that was that was really a pivotal, pivotal class. How about that? Yeah. Well, wow, it's been so wonderful to talk to you. Yeah. Harold Rogers, congrats on all of your success. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has just been such a great yeah, conversation. This has been awesome. And thanks for the boxing lesson, too. Of course. And Danielle, it was just wonderful to hear from all of our book club members. It was, and it was wonderful, your discussion. Harold, we can't wait to see what you have next. Let us know. Let us know what's coming up. And so we would love for others out there to join us and read along with the CBS New York Book Club. Sign up on our Facebook page. Thanks again, Mary and Harold. And thank you all so much for Thank you. Us. We'll I see you had next a great time. time. I had such a Bye. good time. Thank you. <laughs>